Will we get the one of 10 Stellar Pentera? <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, baby. Yo, oh, what is going on? Switch.tv slash either IVE. It's your boy, Dan, AKA Drive. Pretty guys, some Elestrals booster box openings, baby. I'm so excited. Got myself a Kickstarter box right here. Ooh, this is the, uh, the play mat. I love this play mat. This is my, my desk mat now. And like I said, we're gonna crack this box today. This is a beat up box. It's already beat up. So we're just gonna rip this one open and we're gonna have a little fun. And I'm gonna answer you guys on some questions and stuff. Your favorite colors, fun fact. Elestral's colors are purple and blue and like there's a gradient there, right? And those are actually my wife and my colors. Um, it's our wedding colors and everything. Bet you didn't know that. We got a little void seal right here. And then will we get the one of 10 Stellar Pentera? No, no we don't, no we don't. If I ever got it though, everyone would claim rigged. So it's, it's like a double-edged double -edged sword, you know? I can't win on that one. Your own kind of playing cards? Yes, this is my game. I created this game called Elestrals. And uh, we launched on Kickstarter last year and we are about to do our US fulfillment, actually. So there's Pentera. Every um, Elestrals Founders Edition booster box comes with a Pentera box topper. I think it's a great way to start your journey as a, as a caster in the world of Elestria. You get to open a booster box and then right at the top, you get this beautiful Pentera, which is the, uh, the strongest Elestral in the game in terms of its attack stats. So really stoked uh, to get one of those. A nice little guy there. All right, well, let's get the party started. Let's rip some packs and see what we're gonna get. You guys always know I have my binder handy because we're, we're binder gang out here. I've got some sleeves. What kind of sleeves do I have? I got Leviathan, some Vipyro sleeves, some Forges, and then a couple uh, Tarantulas mixed in. All right, so the pack trick for Elestrals is just one to the front. A little Lycoris action, drops of Leaf, Golden Apple of Discord, and Oval. Helios is Cherry Ride, Drataya, Kinleo, Cinder, Globby, and a Gadabolt to kick things off. He did some redecorating. Uh, yeah, I'm in the process of like redesigning my entire office, so it should be done um, in August. So yeah, it's just, we're just like kind of in the middle of it. So we got Lycoris, Drataya, Rumagem, and Clovey, little Necra, and Earth Scout. Ivory, I haven't really seen anyone make good use of ivory yet, but I feel like there's a, there's a world where it could be kind of fun. Uh, Javelantis, Zephrog, and a Falicane. I do think this is a card that is very underrated right now. I think uh, I think Falicane is one that has a chance to do something. So basically, uh, Falicane, uh, it, it basically destroys your opponent's runes. So kind of think of it as like Harpy's Feather Duster from Yu-Gi-Oh, more or less. Are there a set number of hollows, full arts, or alt arts? Um, so I'll say that like generally there is a threshold of hollows that you should see in a box, yes. But I don't want to like promise anything because I'm not the one who packed every box, right? <laughs> but yeah, so far all the boxes that I've opened and that I've seen have followed the the patterns that 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 were defined. Uh, will Elestrals be sold in stores like Target? I hope so. I think so, man. I think, like, probably not for a while, dude, right? Like, we're still technically pre-launch. So, like, obviously, uh, Kickstarter is being fulfilled over the next, you know, eight weeks or so total. And then, you know, we're hopefully gonna have more product by the end of the year and, you know, so on and so forth. But I don't anticipate getting into, like, big stores for, you know, a while. Um, just because we're so new. But I, I think that that's, like, certainly on the... Like the hopes, right? Leviathan, we got Obol and Chariot Ride. Another Drataya, a Rama Gem, and P Geister Bust. We got the Earthquake, Hammer of Hephaestus, Eruption, and... Oh, a full art Leonite, dude. What? That's a way to start the day. A full art Leonite Hollow. This one's so good, I'm not gonna lie. I'm like partially Sag only because I already have pulled this. So it's not any additions to my binder, but Leonite is a very cool card. So what it does, and I think I actually have a great example here to show you for those learning the game. 
Leonite makes it so you cannot cast Invoke Runes when it's an attack. So that means it's immune to Earthquake, right? But it's also, it can shut down a lot of strategies. Generally, its counterpart Sonic War tends to be favored because shutting down counter runes is a little bit better for the offensive side of things. But uh, I think Leonite has a chance to do something in the game. I really do. And I think it's a super cool Elastral. So our first haul of the day is a full art Leonite. Not bad. It's a beautiful card too. Like Diego did his thing. Will I make a video game? I hope so one day. Yeah, so we were, we were working on, um, you know, like a video game type of deal. But I decided to pause because I really wanted to focus my energy on the, the card game right now and like not try to do too much at once. I think like the first like three months of the year, I was trying to do way too many things and it wasn't, one, it wasn't healthy and two, it wasn't like good for the success of the game either. Like trying to do too many things at once. So we have to take a step back, but like take a step back from the extra stuff so we can focus on the card game right now. And a circle of the sky. Always love circle of the sky. What a beautiful, beautiful card this is. Look at that. You got the little E on there. This is a card that I think is gonna age very well. I think it's gonna it's gonna age very, very well. Can you sponsor a segment on Shady's Subathon? So, Nomad, the thing is, man, listen, here's the struggle. I would love to sponsor some content creators and we will we will sponsor some content creators but it's very difficult to sponsor someone when you have nothing to sell right i not not that i don't want people to just hear about elestrals in general but like we don't have any product right now right so like for me to sponsor someone and say hey tell people to go check out elestrals like it's hard to kind of convert on that right it, it's a it's a it's a tricky situation so I do have hopes and plans to uh, work with content creators as we get towards the end of the year when we, you know, st start to get some product in. Um, but we're still a bit of ways away from that. So, so two hollows, Circle the Sky and Leonite. Very good. A little Fire Snake actually, a little Vipyro today. We got the Earth Smog. We got the uh, the Forge. We're gonna hit the stadiums. Your packs like to put the stadiums together. We got Titanstock, Blazerus, Waspire. And Mr. Mustation. You have to call him Mr. Mustation. If you don't, you're disrespecting his namesake. And we don't tolerate that here. Do you have a full list of cards in the set? Yep, Elestrals.com. We've got a Leviathan, Pigaster Bust, Atlantis, Olympus, and Island, Drops of Leaf, Tsunami, Thunderbolts of Zeus, Thunderstorm, and Tech Taurus on Cow Day. I'm very excited to play against you guys. I'm gonna be building some decks uh, over the next probably week or so, like physical decks so I can do webcam games with people when they start getting their cards in the US. We got an Elichick, Veritaqua, and Tadpuff, Ampuff, Coaxle, Carrion, Peliquarius, Scythe of Demeter, and a hollow Spinosect. Spicy Spinosect. This is one of the uh, the early Elestrals to be created. And uh, I always loved its effect. I, I, I don't necessarily think you're gonna see too much Spinosect play <laughs> in the metagame, but I do think it's a fun card. I do think it's a really fun card. So the, the, the idea that it, it one has a nine defense stat as a two drop is very good. I think it's the highest in set, set one. Um, but the fact that it can just sit in defense position and then attack, <laughs> it's just, it's kind of kind of bonkers actually. It, it has some use. I, I don't think you're gonna see anyone playing it, but I do think it has some use. I think that speaking of like that kind of that kind of vibe, I do feel that um, Spine Imp is, is better than people give it credit for right now. Do you think the beta design of Voltempus might come back? Not in its existing form, no. We got a Teratlas and Drataya. Rumagem and Clovey. Little Necro faction. Earth Scout. Spine Imp, speaking of the devil. How do you think, like I said, Spine Imp has some use? Sakurasaur. My boy Barabog and... Krakatuga. So fun fact, Barabog here was actually designed uh, and inspired by a buddy of mine. His name is Dan, Dan TDM. 
Um, he really likes capybaras. So I was like, yo, let me make a capybara illustral. And we came to Barabog. And I'm gonna give you guys a fun little fact. If you look at his little feeties, he has little diamonds on his feeties because Dan TDM is the diamond mine car. Fun stuff. That's a little fun nugget. A little fun nugget for you guys. Bet you didn't know that one. One day when we have Alestral's trivia, that'll be one for the ages. You have a prototype Stellar Mustation? Yeah, that's hype. That's so hype. Lycoris into Sluggle. Would you, would you snuggle with Sluggle? What's up, native? Thanks, man. Would you snuggle? Would you snuggle with Sluggle? I would. What's up, Andy? Thanks for 41 as well. Ty Flant. Small Tuga. The Forge. Atlantis. Barbog. Titano Stock. Blazerus. And. Spawnasect again! I have a very, um. Very bad feeling that I'm about to hit. Many Spinosecs on this one. I feel I'm about to hit a lot of Spinosecs right now. This is, I, I, I feel like we're gonna get like five Spinosecs for some reason. <laughs> don't do it to me. I don't want more Spinosecs. Uh, every pack is Spinosecs. I did see a guy, I'll tell you guys, I saw, so the most amount of hollows you should get in a booster box of the same Alestral is three. Right, that was what the, the specification was to the factory. So if you get three of the same hollow, like that's within kind of the, the boundaries of what we you know said that was allowed. I did see one guy posted he got four of the same hollow and I, I messaged him. I did reach out to him and I apologize and I told him that we're we're gonna do better next time, man. Um unfortunately I was not packing every single pack and box, you know. We got Taratlas, we got Quaggle, Jolton, first ever Lestral Nimbug, Drataya, Rama Gem. Carry on and Peliquarius, say the Demeter and Majursa, big bear, big bear action. Of course, the first Celestial was a bug, of course, it was. When do you think the next update for deliveries in the US will be? Um, potentially tomorrow, but uh, it should be over the next few days. Uh, it's my understanding that we should see orders starting to go out as soon as, like, you know, this week. There's your update by Pyro. Ig Nectar and Warmites. Sluggle, Small Tuga, and Clovey. Aeromare, Syracuse, Chrysor, and Phyrex. Let's go, dude. I will take the rise from the ashes. The Phoenix and Phyrex. I'm, I will gladly take one of these. You can only pull this as a hollow, so it's a good one. Look at those custom E's on there. The little Elastral Z looks beautiful. You can't tell me that doesn't look incredible, dude. I'm so proud of these hollows, man. They look so good. I'm pretty sure I've already pulled in Phyrex though, but I am gonna take a little peek at my binder. Don't mind me. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take a little peek over here. Make sure I, I do have it right there. Page 86. I don't actually know what page it is, but I do already have it. I assume I have, I have, I know I have Spinosect. Yeah, I have Spinosect. I definitely have Circle the Sky in here as well. So nothing new yet. I'm not missing much. The full arts are really the, the hard things, man. Like getting those full arts, dude. It's a struggle, man. That's gonna be the struggle, is getting all the full arts. We do have someone in the community who has um, pulled a master set, though. They did pull a master set. So, but minus the Stellars, of course. But we do have someone who already pulled a master set before me, so, you know. And we have six out of 1,297 Stellars have been pulled. Feedback was great, Optimus. The feedback was actually better than we thought. And uh, I'll have updates for that probably in August. Zapter, Drataya, Ramajam, and Clovey. Necrov and Earth Scout. Spark it, very good card. Signectric, and Astrabit, and a Leonite! They're just bringing the heat with Leonite. Look at this guy. What a beauty. And we pulled the full art earlier, but again, not a bad thing to have. A very cool Elestral card. Yeah, no brainer in the chat has the uh, has the master set. Like I said, beat me to it, which is fine. It's a good thing that you guys got the Stellars and stuff. How many cards am I missing right now? A good amount still, yeah. 
I've only opened, I think, four or five boxes, so... So, when I, I had gotten six boxes initially, but I, I had to give two away because... Well, I gave three away out of the six. I gave one to Steve, the app developer, and then I gave two away to the manufacturer because uh, we were switching manufacturers. So, I wanted them to have copies of it so they can compare and make sure we got, like... We, we kept the things that were good and, like, uh, you know, improved the things that needed to be improved. Um, so, yeah. Scythe and Capricorn. So, so, yeah, I didn't really have that many boxes. And then they told me they had um, the factory, like, the original factory said, hey, we have five more boxes that were damaged that we didn't ship on the boats. And I said, good, send them to me. I want them. So they sent me them. So this is one of the ones that was damaged. And by damage, I mean like the box was banged up, right? So, like more than just a little dent and ding on it, you know what I mean? We got the bears, the bears, Ignector, Warmite, Carrion, Peliquarius, Scythe, and Kreka Tuga. I like Kreka Tuga, man. I was actually working on a Kreka Tuga deck. I think it's got it's got some some possibilities. One will shy splash can't be available to buy. I have no idea. I have no clue, man. I really don't know. I have one in my fridge, though. It tastes amazing. But I have no idea. Leviathan, Drataya, and the Gem, and the Clovey, Necrop, and Scout, Syracuse, Chrysor, Carrion, and Trifernal, dude. Three-headed doggo. Can you subscribe to Share Stars? Yeah, we haven't opened it up yet, but we will. So we gathered a lot of feedback. We actually, um... We have some cool announcements to go with Shattered Stars when the time comes. Um, I'm thinking it'll probably be announced in, um, like I said, in August. Um, I'm going to be sending Shattered Stars to the manufacturer by mid next week. So then once I send it, they'll get me back timelines. So they'll say, okay, like now that we have everything, it's going to take approximately this time for us to do a, a prototype of it. And then it'll take us this time to produce it. And then you'll have it around this time. And then I can open up, you know, pre-orders or whatever for it. I don't want to open up an order for it until I know when I'm going to have it for sure. Because we're probably going to pre-order the first pack and like open pre-orders for it. And um, I don't want to open pre-orders for it and then have you guys wait more than like four weeks, right? So. To Ratlis and the Rummagem and the Clovey, Necra, Earthscatter, Smog, Foamy, Ivory, Javelantis, Imperial, actually. Imperial. Not hollow. Obviously. Uh, yes, Alex. The Elestrals are a little thicker. The cards are thicker, like the cardstock. But they fit in the same standard size sleeves as Pokemon or Magic the Gathering. Yep. Terror Atlas, Ersmog, Ersir, Ignector, Jolton, Nimbug, Scavagem, first of the day, Spark It. Signectric and Fowlicane. What's up, Sonin? Look how beautiful our pack art is, dude. Like, we really did this. Like, this is a real thing. Like, we we did all this. <laughs> it's I still catch myself. I'm like, wow, we really did this. Mr. Pyro. Island, Drops of Leaf, Golden Apple, Obel. Is Lester's gonna get worldwide release and be in stores? Uh, we're gonna be selling exclusively online for at least first edition. Um, we may sell to some local game stores as well, but um, I would say don't expect us in like any sort of retail until at least next year. It just takes time, guys. Like we don't even have a product. So even after Kickstarter is fulfilled, guys, we, so let me finish this back. We should have had product, but I switched manufacturers. So get a bolt. Um, if I didn't switch manufacturers, then I would have product, but I wanted to, like, make things even better. So, um, not that I thought the first manufacturer was bad. Like, I thought that they were really good, but there was a few things that I wasn't happy with after doing Kickstarter. So, nothing major, but stuff that I thought could have been better. So, I decided to switch manufacturers. And, um, the conversation with the manufacturer kind of went a little south. Like, they were kind of rude, so... Um, <laughs> I got kind of tired of working with them. Um, but yeah, so now we're working with the new manufacturer, but it, it creates a big delay. So because of that, I decided to go through a new prototype process with them. So that's a really, like, that's an extra, like, first of all, I lost probably a month or two months in switching manufacturers. Then I'm losing another, like, month to six weeks in the prototype phase. And then we're going to start manufacturing. So 
it's a pretty significant delay, but it's a delay that I think is gonna be way worth it because it's gonna like make the quality better and a higher standard for the next print run moving forward, right? So um, as much as like, trust me, it like kills me inside as like a new game, a new business, a new like, you know, card game, whatever to, to launch and then be like, sorry, I don't, I can't like give you guys new stuff yet. It's gonna take more months. Like it, it really stinks, but like getting it right is, is way more important for the long term, right? Like I didn't build the Lestrals to like do it for a year and then be like, oh, see you later. Like, this is like my career. <laughs> like, this is what I'm doing. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a huge focus of what I'm doing. So I really want to make sure it's uh, it's awesome. Um, we got a Blazerus, Waspire. This is a card to look out for. Kinleo, another very good card. And Hollow. No Hollow, but Volcaries. Always a nice one to pick up. Very good in fire decks. Why do you stream Pokemon anymore? I honestly don't have time, dude. I don't have time. Um, for those who don't know, I, I'm, I'm managing and, and building Elestrals, my card game. Uh, I manage a team of over 50 people now. Um, so it's a lot of work, dude. I'm on calls all day. And also I'm spending more time with my family. You know, I take my daughter to swim lessons three times a week now. She does gymnastics. I spend more time with my son who just turned a year old. Um, you know, so I'm just, I'm just like too busy to, to do everything. I can't do everything. So I had, I have to make a choice, right? And, uh, I'm obviously not going to bail on my family and, uh, I'm not going to bail on Elestral. So unfortunately, uh, you know, you can kind of guess which gets the short end of the stick right now, but I love it, dude. I love it. I'm having so much fun. This is like, like you guys got to realize, like I sat down and I thought to myself, like, what do I want to do? And I created like the the exact job I wanted to have, right? <laughs> like, it doesn't get any better than that, you know? It's like, how do you beat that? I get to, I, I, I sat down, I said, what do I want to do in my career? Like, what do I want to do for work every day? And I'm like, I'm going to make a card game. That's that's what I decided to do. I'm like, let's, I'm going to make a card game. That's what I want to do for my job now. So here I am. I miss streaming too, John. So I will say, I do plan to stream more once Elestrals is out, right? Like once people have their cards and like, I, I, I plan to stream so I can teach people the game. I plan to stream so I can open packs and so I can I can play the game and do game, like mobile app and, and things like that. So I do plan to stream more frequently again with Elestrals. It's not gonna be six, seven days a week, but I, I would like to get to a point where I'm streaming three or four times a week again. Do you have an ETA on uncut sheets and signed cards being sent out? Um, I believe I'm gonna ship them next week. So. I was waiting on confirmation of the US addresses being confirmed. So now that those are, are finalized essentially, I'm gonna pull the list of US ones, I'm gonna pull the list of Australian ones, and I'm gonna get at least those sent out. I'll probably hold the Canada, UK, and EU ones until those cards get sent out as well, just because in case people have address changes. Like, I don't wanna send the uncut sheets twice or send them and have them not get there because someone changed their address. That's a very expensive item for me to get lost in the mail. And I'm eating the cost of shipping those myself. Like. I'm shipping them personally. So, uh, I mean, I'd be eating the cost either way with Elestrals, but e you know what I'm saying? Like, we didn't charge anyone extra for that stuff, right? Like, I'm just shipping it on my own as a separate package. So, I really would like to not have to ship it twice. <laughs> but they're coming. I have them ready to go. They're, they're all, like, set up in one location. The company that's going to be shipping them is 10 minutes from my house, and they know it's coming. I just have been waiting for the thumbs up on, like, hey, these addresses are final. So then, at least I can, you know... I can have done my due diligence. So, uh, no, I know I am gonna have a fulfillment company, like I'm shipping them, but I'm, I'm gonna bring them to uh, a local company that's gonna do it just for this particular set of stuff. Um, what game would I say Lestrals is most like? Uh, so the, the unique part about the Lestrals is it combines your mana, your life points and your energy into one system called Spirits. I would say most people closely compare it to like old school GOAT format Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, but uh, I think it has a little bit more kind of dynamics to it because not only do you use these spirits to cast your cards in your Elestrals, but you can also move them around on the field in unique ways to activate effects multiple times and stuff. So it creates for some pretty cool gameplay. Do I still do the Jeep build thing? I do actually. I just posted on social media that, hey Jothan, thanks for 86 as well. I just posted on social media that I do have a Shiny Splash can flavor that will be releasing very soon. So I definitely am still doing the G Fuel thing. I drink it every day, man. Big G Fuel fan. And uh, we've got some big things planned there. So, yeah. Super stoked. 
Lycoris, Cherry Ride, Drataya, and Rumagem and Clovey. They like to hang out together. Necro, Galaxy. I haven't seen too many Galaxies and I haven't seen too many Boom Bats. Lycavolt. That's another one. We haven't seen that today. And Krakatuga. We have seen Krakatuga. But that was a good pack. That was a couple different cards that we haven't really seen yet. Uh, the latest update I got was August. Yeah, Dark. August, yep. They're doing everything they can to make sure we get in for August. Like I said, the EU and the, um, the EU, UK, and Canada, we particularly ran into some issues that I, I'm going to say are like out of our control, but they were in our control. It was like a, a lack of knowledge situation where uh, the EU has some very, very strict requirements when it comes to uh, like plushies and toys. So we had to jump through so many hoops to get our plushies compliant for the EU and UK, which meant we had to like repackage them. They had to go through like a significant testing process that cost thousands of dollars. Like we, we actually, all in all, like we lost money on our plushies in the EU and UK. Like it cost us more money to like make them and test them and like follow these regulations than it is to, that we actually made from them. It's an unfortunate learning situation for us and another reason why I have a publisher <laughs> moving forward. <laughs> And I actually just got a super long email from my publisher today about those regulations and following the right things. And I even found out that in the US, you need um, three certificates of compliance now in the US for test for uh, plushies and stuff. So like, there's so many other things that we have to do for plushies that make them kind of a headache. But at least now I have a publisher that it's their job to know all these things. So like, it's less likely that a mistake like that happens again. Yeah, there's a lot of, a uh, lot of, a lot of uh, like, just rules and regulations and stuff that again, I had no idea. So like one of the most annoying situations. So we had the plushies tested and they were tested. And then one of the things that came back in the testing was that the bag that the plushie was wrapped in, like the plastic bag that went around the plushie so it didn't get dusty. It, it wasn't thick enough for the regulations that the EU had. So we had to open up all those plushies, hundreds of plushies we had to open up and we had to repackage them just so they could be sold in the US or the EU and UK. So long story short, what I did, another reason why EU and UK was such a headache was I didn't have a registration VAT number in the UK and EU. So to, to, to be able to send, fulfill product in the country, you have to have the right like documentation and you have to have a representation in the country to do it. So every single Elestral's package in the EU and UK is actually getting a sticker over the over the label and it's gonna have an EU, like actually on the bottom, it's on the bottom. On the bottom of the box, instead of having my address for the US, it's gonna have um, like an address of a company that I hired in the EU and UK on the bottom of the box. They have to like put a sticker on it. It's like so dumb, like so many things, dude, so many things. So I basically like had to get another company involved to basically serve as a middleman between Elestrals and you guys and It'll all work out when it's all said and done. Like they're a very reputable, like trusted company and they're helping us out and stuff. But uh, man, it was, it's been, that's been the biggest struggle is like trying to get everything, everything for that. Uh, no, not at all, Orion. We got the Forest, Atlantis and Olympus, Island and Drops, Blazerus, Waspire and Kinleo and a Glidesdale. So what was the particular reason for the delay um, for Canada? So, the Canada situation is, is a little bit different. So the my understanding of the Canada situation is, so we're using two different overarching fulfillment companies for this, right? So we have Quartermaster Logistics, they're handling US and they're also handling Australia and Asia, right? So they're working on, like they have companies under them that are fulfilling those things. Then I hired a company called Surf and Meeple, which is doing EU, UK and Canada. And the reason for that is because they have better access to Canada. They, they ship to Canada more frequently. They have a, a fulfillment center in Canada. QML or Quartermaster, to my knowledge, does not have a fulfillment center in Canada. Theirs would have shipped out of the US. So we would have had to ship all the Canada package from the US, which would have been way more expensive to do, right? Not only for us, but for the customers and things like that. So instead the boat is going directly to Canada and that's being shipped from Canada, which is one faster minus the delays we're experiencing. Um, but two, it, it, it'll be less uh, expensive for people and stuff. So um, that's that's the, the gist of the reason. Uh, so the company that is doing the Canada fulfillment is different than the company that's doing the other stuff. So that's part of the reason why it's delayed. Um, 
Can I show how I'm storing the cards? Uh, yeah. I'll show you in a second. It's not very organized. I well, it's organized in a, in a way, but it's still still a work in progress. So this is basically what I have right now. I basically just have this big like thing going on, and it's it's separated by element, and then it's separated like by promo, and then this is like my stellar pile. So I just or not my stellar, my my spirit pile, right? So this is like my hollow spirits, but then I have like all my other spirits next to it, and then I have like my I gotta cramp my leg. By like non promo hollows, right? So these are like the non promo hollows that I pulled that are not in my binder. And then I've got like all my promo hollows, which I was sorting by element at one point, but I've, I've you know, it's, this is actually pretty good. But um, so, like, eventually, I think the end goal is at the very least to have it sorted by element, which it is. Like, all my commons and uncommons are sorted by element or rune. Um, I think, like, the end goal is definitely to at the very least group cards and stuff, but I think at the very le at least having them by element is good. We got Leviathan, Cherry Ride, and Ignector, Warmite, Kraken. I don't think we've seen a single Kraken today. Sluggle and Astrabit, very good. Aramare, Seracoon, Rise from the Ashes, let's go, dude. That's a good one, man. Uh, I think it was Wurtz who did the video that this is considered to be the rarest functional card in Illustrals. And what that means is, of all the cards that you can pull, there are obviously cards that are rarer, like Full Arts and things like that. But in terms of cards that, like to get this effect, this card is, is technically the rarest. Um, because the only way to get Rise from the Ashes is to pull a Hollow, and it's not printed in any other way. It's just, it's only printed as a Hollow, so. We got zapped here. What's the craziest chase? So the craziest chase is the Stellar Pentera box topper. We have uh, in our game, Kyle. We have cards called Stellar Rares, which are serialized cards that have a little number on the bottom that shows how many of them exist. So most serialized cards only have 99 copies. Pentera only has 10 copies. So if you pull it, only 10 will exist in the world ever. Um, but the Stellars themselves are very rare. We've only seen six of them pulled so far, and there are 1,297 total but there's only 14 different Stellars that you can get, so. Um, they're very, very rare. And there's a few Stellars that actually haven't even been revealed yet. Should be pretty soon, Brainer. I know Brandon was working pretty hard on getting the Stellar Tracker done, so. Imperial. So I definitely am excited for Stellar Tracker and I'm very excited to pull my first Stellar. I have 36 booster boxes coming for Kickstarter. Um, and I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I did request the fulfillment company to ship my my order first. I'm sorry, special privileges, all right? <laughs> I did request to be bumped to the front of the line. The limited ones are exclusive variant. Oh yeah, yeah Kyle, so one of the things that Elestrals really focuses on is making sure the game is not pay to win. So any cards that are super rare like that, they exist as more common versions. For sure, yeah, so. No way the creator gets the product first, not fair. I know, I know, I know. Dylan's first birthday was great, yeah, it was awesome. <gasps> Yo, Hollow Lycoris, wait a minute, that's a way to start the pack? Okay, so generally speaking, every booster box will come with a Hollow Spirit. If yours doesn't, don't get mad at me. I didn't pack them. Um, Lycoris is a good one. I think I actually needed this for my binder. So let's, let's make sure we, we, we set in this. I'm just going to put it in the binder now. Okay. Just remember when we recap at the end that I did pull this and I'll show you guys the binder at the end too. Cause it is, it is coming along. It is coming along. So this should be slotting in right over here somewhere. Yep. All right. I'll give you a little peek at it. So here's that, that final page of the binder. I've got three of the five spirits so far. So I need the Tarantulas and I need the Leviathan. So I'll gladly take that one though. That's a, that's a big win for us. I still have the rest of the pack though. So, uh, yeah, Summoner, but you're not gonna see him for a long time. <laughs> Next year. <laughs> tier, tier zero bear support when? Um, I don't know about tier zero, but I will say it's it gonna get some love in, in, uh, in set two, so. Bears get some some very fun love in set two. I will say that. Um, yeah, it's good stuff. 
Uh, we got Leviathan, Obol, what's up Shark, Helios, Mormite, Sluggle, and Typhlant, Eruption, Trident of Poseidon, Tsunami, Latagon! We just did a short today on Latagon. By the way guys, if you're not following Alessio on social media, please do. I'm telling you, we post really awesome content, dude. I have a team of content creators and editors making awesome content for Elestrals every single day. And it costs us a lot of money to do that, so please watch it. <laughs> so funny. What would you do if the 10 Stellar Panteras end up in my 36 boxes? Uh, I'd have to give them away. It would be, uh, it'd be rigged. It won't, though. Sorlet. I don't feel like we saw Sorlet today. Forest, Forge. Got the stadiums in case you ever need them. Bag of Winds. Tornado. Imperial. Wow. A lot of Imperials. All right. We got Taratlis, Tadpuff, Ampuff, Elichick, and Coackle. Jolton. Hammer of Hephaestus. Eruption. Thunderbolts of Zeus. And Pandora's Box. You dare open Pandora's box. Lycoris, Ampub, Elichig, Quackle, and Jolton. Nimbug, Scavagem, Spinem, Sakurasaur, and Rise of the Ashes again! Let's go, dude! That's actually so good. Like, we like to see that. That's a very, very nice card to have. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we have 10 hollows so far, guys. Which means that there's a solid chance there's probably two more, if we're lucky. Two more hollows left. How many booster boxes deep? I think I'm only like three or four. Like, not that much, actually. Like, more, like, less than you would think. Necrov, Earth Scout, Foamy, Ivory, Javelantis, and Glidesdale. Yeah, you would have thought I would have opened more at this point, but no. Uh, like I said, I, I said earlier, I only had so many boxes. I, I was sent six boxes initially to, to check them. I gave one to my buddy Steve, and then I gave two to the new manufacturer for them to verify. And then I opened one myself for quality control. I opened one for a video, and then I opened one that's half open that I'm using for pack battles, which is the pack battle I did with Steve. And then I was sent five additional boxes and one of those I'm opening right now. So I think I have four boxes left in my office. But yeah, I'm redecorating my office, guys. So don't, uh, you know, I'm just cleaning it up, you know? Um, I'm, I'm trying to be a little less clutter, cluttery and, uh, you know, just do some cleaning and stuff. So I'm actually redesigning my office and I'm flipping the desk around too. So like the wall you see, see now is actually gonna be, you're gonna see the wall over there instead, like on the other side of the camera. I'm gonna put the desk on the other side of the room and flip the room. Um, I think it'll be better that way, so. And then do other things to it, too. Javelantis, Zephrog, Riceros! I will always take a little Riceros. I love me some Riceros. One of my faves. This is actually legitimately one of my favorite Elestrals. I love this little guy. I love it. What's up, Redman? How's it going? You know what I mean? Just realizing that the walls are painted like a Pokeball? Yes. The walls are indeed painted like a Pokeball. <laughs> Another Sorlet today. We love to see those. Thunderstorm, Bag of Wind, Scythe, and... Spinosec! I told y'all it was a Spinosec kind of day, man. I told y'all. At least it's three and not four. I told y'all it was a Spinosec kind of day. If your team Spinosec... <laughs> Got the playset. Got the playset, dude. Um, I think that's probably it for hollows in this box, but there's always the chance of a stellar, so like we should probably we should probably find out. By the way, shouts to Elestrals, my game. We uh we go the extra mile, guys. The inside of our boxes are designed. No other I don't know of any other TCG. Maybe there are other ones, but most TCGs do not do this. We we make our boxes all fancy on the inside too. You know? We try to think of everything. As best as we can. I keep the boxes too, because they're nice. Eventually I probably won't, but for now I will. We got the uh, Typhlant, Tuga, Takwa, Tadpub, Ampup, Signetric, Scavagem, Spine Amp, and Mr. Mustation, so I was asking. Ratlis, Nimbug, Piga, Sorlet, Forest, Forge, Kinleo, Cinder. I don't think we saw too many Cinders. Globby and Falcane. So we capped on our hollows, which was fine. I was 
I was not uh, expecting anything other than that, so. Here we go. So I got three Spinosecs. What are you gonna do? Not too bad. Riceros always pumped two Rise. Uh, that's very nice, the two Rise. Pandora's Box, also nice. Leonite's good, Emphrix is good. A lot of fire for me. And the Full Art Leonite's great. I did pull, I already had one, but still cool. Um, so overall pretty good box. And I pulled the, the Lycoris, which I needed. So overall cannot complain. I'll give you guys a little binder preview though. Cause the binder, I feel like the binder preview is always fun. Um, I know that you see the, the lines around it, but. So this is prototype. This is the prototype uh, collection. So I'm still not done with prototypes. This is all prototype stuff. So most people don't have these. Uh, like, you know, this is pretty exclusive to just your boy. I'm missing a couple full arts. I do have the Stellars though, minus Sonicor. <laughs> so these are the prototype Stellars. Um, and then prototype cards, Hydrake, Pandasin, Nimbug. And then this is the prototype starter decks, which pretty much no one has these. I know you guys ordered them, but there was another set of starter decks that I ran prototypes that were uh, Pantera Hollow and Centarbor Hollow, just those two. Um, and they were very limited. Uh, pretty much no one has them. Like I said, I didn't really give them away unless you were like a friend slash content creator. Um, and then here's the promos for Kickstarter. So the blister pack promos and then starting from Pandasin for the free promo pack all the way through. Uh, every single one of them in order, of course. And then the artist collection, right? So we've got all the artist collection cards here, which are beautiful. And then that brings us to our gold Pentair and then the, the box topper Pentair. And then this is Founders Edition for Kickstarter. So uh, you can see I've got, you know, pretty much most of this stuff, you know, all the way to Thunder basically. And then I'm missing Sonic War and I'm missing Voltempest. Those are two regular hollows. And then this is Full Art Demeter. I have everything else. Uh, full Art Hephaestus, Full Art Poseidon, Full Art Zeus, Full Art Aeolus, and then um, uh, Nectar of the Gods. I guess I don't have Nectar of the Gods Hollow. So <laughs> I guess I am missing Nog. Um, and then these are all Full Arts. So it's, uh, I guess it's Full Art Centarbor, uh, Full Art Trifernal, Full Art Empherix, uh Full Art, Sonicor, Terratlas, Leviathan, Altart, and then Stellars. And then these are, um, what's up, Jordy? And then these are the prototype, like, hollows, I guess? Like, these are all the prototype hollows that I have. A lot of these, the only way to get these were giveaways or, like, autographed cards, basically. So, like, these are some of the hollow patterns that I tested early on. You can see I tested a bunch of different hollows. This is how I found the Stellar Hollow pattern with these. Uh, we ended up tweaking it a little bit, but uh, this is a really cool hollow pattern. We ended up not using, but it looks really de neat. And I was testing, um, you know, putting the hollow on the, the icons, like the, the element icons. Uh, we were testing putting the hollow on like the borders and stuff. So again, some of this stuff like generally like hasn't really been seen. This is kind of the general pattern for um, artist collection that we had tested out. So, and then this is another wave of prototypes that I had gotten done. Um, so these are non-numbered Stellars, but you can see the old defense icon. So this was, um, this is actually the prototype run I did with the factory that we ended up using for Kickstarter. These were all from uh, a different factory that I never used, I didn't use. Um, so it's every one of these have both hollows, hollow one and then stellar hollow. So even if they're not stellar. So these are all the cards that I printed for that. And then that goes all the way to the Nogs. This is when we had like tiny font. You know, we didn't we didn't even have like the font that filled the full card. Um, and then of course some Frostix as a prototype. So really cool, man. Like this is a, uh, to me, this is like a really special, you know, binder for me. Um, I keep talking about how like, I really haven't kept a binder since I was a kid. And it's been really fun for me to, to kind of, to do that now. All right, well, what is it? It's taken me an hour to open a box, so I guess let's just do another box. All right, so, chat. You guys have to decide, do I open a prototype booster box to try to get some the, the last prototype Stellar I need? Every prototype box is a Stellar in it. Or do I open the Kickstarter box? Let me know in the chat. The majority is Kickstarter, so we will do the Kickstarter. But these prototype boxes, whew, very spicy. 
All right, let's see. Box number two. We're just hitting another one today. Will I get a Stellar Pantera on the top? No. No, I will not. Let's get this party started. A new chance at a Stellar and a new chance at a full art that I need. Teratlas, Warmite, Crackid, and Sluggle, Typhlant, Jolton, Astrabit, Aeromare. Didn't see too many of those. Syracuse and Voltempest! Yes! What a way to start the opening! A Voltempest! For those who do not know, first of all, I needed Voltempest for my binder. But also, Voltempest is considered the kind of meta deck right now. Like, if you were to ask the people who play Elestrals the most right now, which is a small group of people because the game's not out yet, right? Um, that'll change in a few weeks. Uh, Voltempest is considered the, the kind of highest level of deck right now. So to get a Voltempest is a good start because I'm probably going to want three of them eventually. Although I do have the, um, the, the promo one. I have some promo ones, so I guess I do have them. But this is the Hollow Vent Voltempest that I did not have previously. So I can slide it into my binder there. And that's another dex page locked down. We love that. Is it just me or similar cards next to each other in packs? Yeah, that's something we're going to have fixed in the next print. Um... I'll be honest, man, uh, when it comes to kind of the randomization, you know, you'll see some of the cards make frequent appearances next to each other. I know exactly why it happened. It wasn't supposed to happen. Um, again, one of the reasons I'm switching manufacturers, but it will be way better in the next set. And I'll explain to you why. It's because it's a really good question to understand the why. So Spine Imp and then a Floracne, which we actually didn't see in the last box. So here's what we did. So when I, when I set up the pack... If I go in reverse order here, when I set up the pack, we put the the instruction was to have five commons, three uncommons, um, and then a rare and a spirit. Right? That that's that was the the breakdown. The problem that came to be was I specified for them to put the same the five commons next to each other to start the pack, and then the three uncommons next to each other to start the pack. And then the rare and then the spirit. That was what the instructions was, or were rather. I also sent them the files in a way that it put all of the cards of the same element next to each other. So all of the common earth cards were next to each other in the files. And then when they put that onto the, the sheet to the proofing process, the computer program to print everything, they printed in sheets that had these cards next to each other. So then when they were cut, all of the common earth cards were stacked on top of each other. And then the way the sorting process happened, they ended up doing it in a way that resulted in some of those kind of um, patterns happening at a, at a relatively frequent pace, not to, not to skirt around it, right? So there's two things that we're doing to fix that, right? The first one is I changed manufacturers. I have moved to a much better manufacturer and not that the last one was bad, like they work with a huge TCG that's in like every store, right? So it's not like I just picked at the bottom of the barrel. I picked a company that I knew had already done this before. Like they had done TCGs that are in every store. So, you know, they were legit, but I picked a manufacturer that has a publisher. Like I have a publisher. So that means that I have a company in the middle that serves to ensure the highest quality. And the publisher that I'm working with is called AdMagic. And they work with Cards Against Humanity, they work with Doomlings, Exploding Kittens, like they print and ship all of Cards Against Humanity, right? So like, this is a really awesome thing. The second thing I'm doing to fix this is, well, yeah, there's three things. The second thing I'm doing is in the files of me sending everything, we didn't put all the common Earth cards next to each other, right? So you might have Earth, Fire, Thunder, Earth, Earth, Water, whatever. So we like randomized that part of it. And then I also changed the specifications for how the pack is set up. So rather than the pack being five commons, three uncommons, it's eight cards, and it could be any pattern of common and uncommon with five commons and three uncommons. Does that make sense? So the possibilities of how a pack will look when you open it have just exponentially multiplied. Because now it could be common, common, uncommon, uncommon, common, common, uncommon, common, right? as opposed to common, 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 uncommon, uncommon, uncommon. You see what I'm saying? So those types of tweaks are going to improve that experience for the next print, which will be first edition. So, you know, it, at the end of the day, like, I think 
no one is gonna be more frustrated about things like this than me, right? Like, let me just tell you that. Those kinds of things really are annoying, especially since between us, you know, I, I did specify these things ahead of time. This was out of my control. I had called this out in, in pre-production. I said this needs to be randomized and they didn't they didn't listen, right? They didn't follow the instructions. Um, so there's only so much control I have there, but um, we're gonna fix it moving forward. That's all we can do, you know, is, is do just do better. But I, what I was gonna say is I think a lot of people may tend to forget where a lot of card games start <laughs> and just kind of the growing pains that happen when you're creating something new. Um, it's just the reality of it. Another Voltempest? Okay, we'll take it. We will gladly take a second Voltempest. This could be a Voltempest box. Um, so, Tadpub, Ampub, Elichick, and Quackle, Drataya, and Ivory, Javalantis, Zephrog, Tectoris. We got Lycoris, we got Quackle, Jolton, Nimbug, Piga, Surbus, Sorlet, Boombat, Legavolt, Griffews, didn't see too many Griffews. And rise from the ashes. All right. Again, not complaining about these cards. These are some of the more coveted cards. So if I'm gonna pull some, some extras of these, those are the ones to pull. Those are the ones to pull. I got a play set today. Uh, we'll have updates for Shattered Stars in a few weeks. I, I explained earlier why we haven't had the pre-orders open for them yet. And it basically comes down to I have to make sure I know exactly when they're gonna be ready. Because I don't I don't want you guys to pre-order and then have to wait too long. Like, if you guys pre-order something and I say, hey, you guys are gonna get it in about a month, that's one thing. But if you pre-order something and it takes like three months to get, that's not a good vibe, right? Like, that's not kind of the thing that I wanna do. So I wanna make sure that if, if and when we open pre-orders for Shattered Stars, we're like already starting to print, right? Or like, we're, we're like, they're gonna start printing in the next couple days. So that way they can print it all and we can get it to you guys quick enough, right? Spinosect! <laughs> he keeps coming! He don't stop coming and they don't stop coming. Spinosect, man. No Stellar yet? Stellars are rare, dude. Stellars are rare. So this is what? What I'm saying is my fifth box, I think, I've opened so far. And you're not gonna see a Stellar. I mean, you'll see a Stellar approximately like one in, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 boxes, somewhere around there. So, they're rare, dude. I, I wanna be very honest with people, like, Stellars are, Stellars are hard to find. Are you talking about additional sets outside of the Kickstarter? Yes, yes. Falcane. So, I've been very transparent, honey, that um, obviously, you know, Kickstarter is, is being fulfilled. We, we've been very open that first edition is being printed. Uh, very very soon after I'm hoping to have first edition by October first edition will be the same as Kickstarter with some small changes But the same functional cards its primary purpose is to give people who miss Kickstarter a chance to get into the game Introduce some new stellars things like that um, I've, I'm pretty much done with set two. Uh, set two development is is almost I mean almost done We're, we're I have a call tomorrow to finalize uh, Any updates to card text and then we're just going through our final proofing phases and we're doing our last bit of balancing uh, the next week or two. So set two is pretty much done. Um, and I'm about, I would say art wise, we're probably probably 80, 90% done with set three art wise. And I'm probably 50 to 60% done with like my first draft of the cards. So actually probably like 70 or 80% done on first draft of the cards. So like we're, we're pretty, we're pretty, we're in good shape right now. So the, the, what, what's kind of nice is the production delay that we ran into where we like switch manufacturers and stuff. It gave me a chance to get a little bit ahead on the, the production side of like making new sets. Um, so, and I know some people, um, some people like I had gotten a comment in discord uh, the other day of someone who was like kind of saying it, they didn't really feel that great that I was already talking about other sets and like people don't even, oh, <laughs> My first full art divide rune, and it's my favorite one. I love it. I'm so excited. My boy Aelis, the king of the skies, the king of the island of Aeolia, and he's chilling on some clouds with some Stratomoth floating by him with his bag of winds, man. I love this, dude. 
So sick. That's straight binder material right now. Straight binder material right now. Let's get it. Two binder hits already, ladies and gentlemen. You love to see it. You love to see it. We can slot that bad boy right in. I'll just, I'll give you a boom. There he is. Did the same person do all the art? No, we have about 30 artists on the team. Very talented individuals. I will say too, like, I think that one thing you'll see is like if you if you follow the game, right? Like as as you as you follow, you know, set one and set two development and set three and so on and so forth, I think you're gonna see a really, really like substantial improvement in a few things. One, I think you're gonna see a substantial improvement of the art, right? Like quality is another one, right? Because of the production side of things. Um, but the art I think is only getting better because our artists like are getting better at trying to do a less rolls, right? Like a matter of practice. Um, and then I think you'll also see, I think the game gets a lot better because I'm not gonna pretend like I'm some card game savant card building expert guys. Like I never built a card game before, right? This is my, this is my first stab at it. <laughs> my first and only stab at it, um, you know? So yes, dude, yes, Steve, are you here? Um, you know, so <laughs> I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, you know, uh, try to make it seem like I'm some, uh, some expert here. So I have learned so much about what I'm trying to do and how I want to do it and how to do it better and more efficiently. And I really think you're going to see in set two that the game gets so much better, dude. Like, I really think that we created a good game. Like, I really genuinely believe that. I wouldn't I wouldn't put all this time and energy into it if I didn't, right? I genuinely believe we have something really special here. I think you're gonna see that over the next decade plus. I genuinely do. But I think you guys are gonna see a, a significant difference in set two in terms of just the overall themes, the cohesiveness between the cards, the, uh, the strategy depth that gets introduced. It's a really, 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 uh, really big win and a huge step up, I think. Zapter, Tuga, Piga, Sorlet, The Forest, Forge, Griffuse, Spark It, Signetric. Yes! Sonic Cord! Let's go, dude! Let's get it, baby! That's three binder pages knocked, or binder slots knocked off with the Sonic Core. We are out here. We are out here, dude. Like, feeling like a kid in the candy store right now, bro. Three binder slots, done. And now all I need are full arts, man. Like, that's it. So boom, Sonic Horse slides right in. This has been a very good opening for me. I'm a happy guy. I filled uh, four pages so far, or four slots in my binder today. We love to see it. Feeling good. There will be some leftover play mats. Uh, you know, once we once we finish fulfilling Kickstarter, so the Atlantis one will be less than there was, but the other ones will, will be. I, I will have some extra stuff. Like, like I'll I'll tell you guys. I have I have no problem telling you guys. If I look right now, I'll give you just a rough estimate on what we have left. So, this is assuming that nothing goes horribly wrong in shipping, right? Uh, we have to account for some variations of like I don't know someone gets a package it gets rained on or something right i don't know whatever um but i should probably have about 400 of each, each blister pack left so the stellar spirits 400 of each roughly i should have about 600 booster boxes left which sounds like a lot but it's not like that's not a lot at all like i i actually wouldn't be surprised if you told me that those booster boxes if we put them on the store they would sell out uh you know pretty quickly I think that those are gonna those are gonna move pretty quick. Um, I will have a, a decent amount of starter decks though. I should have about six, seven hundred of each starter deck left over. That was intentional. I wanted to make sure I had a, some extra starter decks because I think that's a crucial piece for new people to learn the game. Um, not too many, you know, but a couple hundred, set like six hundred of each. Um, in terms of binders, I won't have many binders. I may have fifty binders left. Probably not that many binders left. Um, I'll have probably some of the card sleeves I'll have maybe like 50 of left. Um, 
The pin sets, I won't have many left. I might have 20 pin sets left. Um... The plushies, I'll probably have 30 to 40 plushies of each left. That's about it, right? I mean, and then the playmats. I'll probably have about 60, 50, 60, 70 of each playmat left. So, not much. Promo packs, I have... I'll have quite a few promo packs left. I don't know what I'm going to do with them, though. Whether I sell them, give them away, or whatever, I don't know. I mean, I could sell them. I, I wasn't planning to sell them. We will have some surplus of those. Those could be fun, like, giveaways, prizes down the road, things like that. We'll figure something out. Um, you know, we may do a deal where if you, if you, uh, you know, spend X amount of dollars on this day, then you get this. I, you know, there's things that we can do, so, um, we'll figure that out. So, the extra booster box is the plan to sell it. Yeah, I plan on, on selling any leftover inventory minus a little bit of variation. Ooh, our first equal links of the day. That's a very good pull, actually. So, I would say that I'll probably take about 10% of what's left and set it aside, um, you know, not for my personal collection, but for like, I'll probably keep it at my house um, or in storage or something. And that'll be kind of like a, like a safety net just, just to have that product. Just who knows what, what the unforeseen situations could be. Um, it'll be nice to have. And then the rest I will sell you. Yeah. We got the Earthseer, Ignector, Pegas, and Sorlet, the Forest, Griffuse, Sparkit, Signectric, and Trifernal. I uh, know Full Art Pantera. So one thing you guys got to realize is 85% of the Kickstarter booster boxes are in the US and the US hasn't shipped yet, right? Like they're shipping in the next few days. So while we have seen six Stellars in Australia so far, the vast majority of cards are in the US, right? Uh, that doesn't mean the other areas aren't important or relevant or any of that stuff. I'm just, just from a pure statistics standpoint, right? Like the far majority of Elestrals is in the United States. So in terms of like how people back the project. So um, so we do anticipate like to see an in a huge influx of Stellars over the next few weeks. Majursa and a necklace too. By Pyro, Elichick and Coaggle, Jolten, Lil Nimbug Action, Drataya, Cinder, Globby, Foamy and Krakatuga. Tadpuff, Ampup, Elichick, Quackle, Jolton, Peliquarius, Scythe of Demeter, and Barra Bog, and we're gonna get a Stellar. Nope. Uh, where will you be able to purchase it? For the foreseeable future, guys, um, expect Elestrals to be sold through our website directly. Um, that doesn't mean- Ooh! Ooh, let's go, dude, another one! We are killing it tonight! We are killing it tonight, guys. Another hollow for the binder. Hollow Leviathan Alt Art. A beauty. Let's go, dude. I'm I'm feeling good tonight. This was a great box for me. It has it has certainly made my chase that much better. I will gladly slide this in right there. Now, all I am missing now, guys is Teratlas and then Full Arts and then Stellars, so. I don't necessarily think that's the case, Pope. I, I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily agree, man. So while there is some, um, you know, kind of clumping in, in some ways, uh, we haven't really seen instances of like a particular hollow appearing more than three times in a, in a, in like kind of an array, right? Um, so, like, that's kind of your worst case scenario, is you pull three of the same hollow. But, I think when you realize that there's only, like, 13 hollows to pull that are, I think it's 13, that are in that kind of category of, of, um, you know, that particular hollow slot, it might be actually be 17, um, it's really not that many, right? Uh, in the current Pokemon sets, as an easy comparison, they have so many cards in their in their boxes, right? So they have like their sets are like 180 cards deep, dude. Like they have and they have so many different alternate version prints of each card. So there's a little bit more variance there. But yeah, we're definitely working on that, man. So have no fear. Um, how would you clarify a full art from an alt art? 
The Centaur of Polar looks like an Ulta. Yeah, so we have... So I guess our way of doing it is we have like regular arts like this where it's in the frame and then we have full arts where it takes over the whole frame. That, I mean, that, when I say alt art, it's, it's because this is the standard spirit and then we have like a hollow alternative art version. Um, there's also full arts. Some of them are a little bit more decorated than others, but yeah, we just have like alt arts, full arts. I don't know. Uh, no, aggro, there's no difference between a hollow Tyratlus and a regular Tyratlus in terms of functionality. Galaxy, boom bat. Equal inks. But like, to the person concerned about the randomization, so like, in this box I got two Volt Tempest, Arise, Spinosec, Viscerous, Leviathan, and Aeolus, right? And Sonicore. So like, the only duplicate I got so far was Volt Tempest. And I have two of them. Now, granted, there are still hollows for me to get, but like, getting two, three Volt Tempest, no complaints here, right? So, I would take that. Forge, Smoltuga, Veritaqua, Tadpup, Ampa, Peliquarius, Scythe, Kinleo, Caprigal. Can Stellars be in Blisters? Yes. Yes. The distribution of Stellars, Full Arts, Alt Art Spirits, Hollows, they have equal distribution between uh, booster boxes and blister packs. So uh, equal distribution in the sense that they made all of the packs and then they, they were seeded into the blisters and the booster boxes. So like the chance of getting a hollow in a blister pack is the same as getting a hollow. Like it's it's a one in three roughly, right? So, and I've, I have seen, um, I have seen people pull like crazy good hollow luck in blisters. I can tell you that I had very bad hollow luck in blisters when I first got my blisters and like was testing some stuff out. Um, I had like really bad hollow luck in blisters. Uh, but I've seen the opposite for some people, like the few openings that are up right now. I saw some people like popping off, so I just had some bad luck. Well, sets in the future focus on more specific types of Lestral. So set two introduces a new element, Frost, right? So because it introduces Frost, there's a, a significant focus on Frost in set two. But I will say that there's cards for every element. My, my plan, at least right now, is, for, and I can tell you that I'm working, you know, set two's almost done, set three is work in progress, set four is work in progress. I actually, we're, we're pretty far along on set four art. I haven't started the effects yet. Um, so, like, I have some, but not too far. Uh, but we're introducing new Elestrals in every element for the first four sets. I don't think that changes. Like, we probably will always do that. It may be, like, Earth may get three new Elestrals and, like, Water may get seven, right? Like, there, there may not be, like, five for each or whatever, but... Hey, what's up, Luan? Um, so, how are you, man? Uh, but yeah, we will be... Like, I want to make sure that every set is, at, you know, kind of catering to people who like different elements and building out different archetypes and, you know, that kind of stuff. So, Signetric, Sonicore, let's go! Yeah! Dude, this is a good one. Like, this is one that I need, bro. Maybe this is a triple Sonicore box, dude. Which AI program did you use to make these? I didn't use any AI program. In fact, we started the Lestrals before the AI uh, art software was like really a thing. Your boy Sonicore, love it. I, dude, I always say, Luan, like, the the moment you sent Sonicore to me, like in the server, bro, like when you designed it, that was one of the pivotal moments for me as the creator, like to feel that we really had a chance to do something special. Like for some reason, man, that design, I remember like, I didn't even tell you to do it. We had the instructions for Boombat, you made Boombat, and then you hit me with Sonicore that day. And I was like, bro, this is wild. This thing is so sick. That was, that was a good one. That was a good one. I really, that, like I said, that was, that was, I'm not even kidding. I've told that story a few times. Like I really, I really believe that that was like a, a significant moment for me. So where I was like, man, we might actually have something. Like this is, this is for real. So that's great, man. That's great. We got the Forge, Atlantis, Tsunami. Uh, yeah, I had that wrong. Thunderbolt of Zeus, Thunderstorm, Tripron. Can you challenge me for your first Celestials match? <laughs> yeah, dude. I do plan to stream webcam games with you guys. So um, yeah, man, I'm definitely excited for some webcam games. 
Probably as soon as, you know, uh, probably not next week. And I'm going to be away the following week, but uh, like August, like first week of August, I'm ready to rock. We got Nimbug, Pegust, and Sorlet, Foloi, Volcanic, Patanastock, Blazerus, Waspire, and Latagon. Well, cards get reprints in future sets to secondary prices reasonable. So I've already like indicated uh, Kabbalah that we're, we're doing some of that stuff. So first thing is we are reprinting set one with a first edition. Um, so that'll make some of the cards more accessible. I've also said that in the future, I'm not going to be, at least for the next set and, and probably for the future, I'm probably not going to do starter deck exclusive cards anymore in terms of functional cards. Um, and then we will be like reintroducing some of those cards in the future. So yeah, uh, certainly the plan is I don't want anyone to be kept away from Elestrals because of the cost to build a meta relevant deck. I do not want that. Now, I can't control what happens after Kickstarter. I, I really only printed what Kickstarter ordered. So, like, don't be surprised if things are a little tough until we get first edition. And, and maybe even beyond that. I don't know. I have no idea what to expect, right? I really don't. I can't control that aspect of it. I can only make what I can make. But I do not want the game to... I do not want there to be barriers of entry for the game from a functional card perspective. The way we can create value and rarity and, and really, really special cards in terms of stuff that's hard to get is through full art cards and stellar rares and serialized cards like that kind of stuff where a card is only 99 copies exist in the whole world but you can get that same effect on a, on this on a non-hollow version of it right you know what i mean like that's that's the kind of stuff that that i've kind of got in my mind so uh, yeah well i mean we'll see how everything plays out but that's been kind of my plan so oh we got a little sore light into chrysor Carry on and Majesty. App's looking good. Yeah, we had a good call about the app today. So that's gonna be rolling out pretty soon. Uh, probably first week of August. Uh, that's our, our target right now. Uh, so yeah, at least like a, a rollout for backers. All right, we got a Zapter, Crackid, Sluggle, Tie Plant, Smoltuga, Veritaqua. I was going for it, no brainer. Kinleo, Cinder. What are the odds you'd be popping into streamers opening their founder stuff? I mean, like 100%. I already have watched, like... Guys, I'm not kidding. I go on YouTube and I search Elestrals every single day and see who posted videos and I try to watch them. And when people were streaming and posting that they were streaming in Discord, I legit stayed up all night watching as much as I could. So, and the, you know, No Brainer was one of the people streaming and they can vouch that I was there, right? Like, I don't chat a whole lot, but I, I was watching, so... I cannot wait, guys. Like, you have no idea the feeling that I feel when I get to see someone opening my game. Like, dude, that is the craziest thing. The craziest thing, dude. Like, it doesn't get cooler than that in, in terms of... It, it just doesn't... It doesn't get any cooler. I'd have to have people submit the clips painting there, but yeah. So, I watch a ton of stuff. I watched Wurtz's, uh, uh Jeopardy today on Elestrals. I watched a Jeopardy video where they, like, had, like, fun questions. Was it Jeopardy? I don't know. I think it was Jeopardy. Um, so yeah, dude, I love it. Yeah. yeah. It's so cool, dude. And you know, it, it helps me get a good pulse of like, you know, what the community is thinking, you know, what the sentiment of certain things are. It allows me to do my job better, you know? Like I said, I'm not gonna pretend like I'm perfect, dude. Like, it's not like I've made like 15 card games or anything like that. Like, you know, this is, I'm learning as I go too, you know? I'm not gonna pretend like I'm not. Um, you know, so I can take feedback and really, uh, you know, really try to do something awesome. So. But I mean, when someone makes a game for the first time, it's their first time, right? Like, <laughs> that's just how it works. So I, I'm only going to get better at it. I'm, you know, I, I'm very dedicated. So, and it's not like I've never played card games. I have a lot of card game experience in my life. So that, that helps, right? That definitely helps. Mr. Mustache Man. Mr. Mustache Man. It was really cool. Today I was at swim. Uh, my daughter is taking swim lessons. I had said that earlier. Uh, she's taking swim lessons right now. And there were two little kids uh, that were, they had binders and they were actually flipping through Pokemon cards. And uh, I just thought it was really cool. And I, I had said something. I said, look, you know, Dallas, you know, my daughter. I said, look, Dally, they've got a little binder with Pokemon cards. And the, uh, the mom looks up and she says, yeah, it keeps him away from some screen time for a little while. 
<laughs> I was like, yeah, <laughs> that's a good thing. And I was, you know, I was talking to somebody recently about kind of why I created the card game and like what, what card games meant for me as a kid and stuff. And one of the things like, it was actually, I was talking to my trainer this morning, my, my personal trainer. Um, I was talking to him about like how impactful cards games were for me as a kid, like learning vocabulary, learning strategy, memorization, like anticipation. Like I was explaining to him, like there were in, in, in Alestros, like you can make so many educated assumptions or guesses based on the first card someone plays in a game, right? Like if I'm playing against Wurtz and his first cast is a Mustation, I know he probably has three Tsunamis in his deck. I know he probably has Galaxy in his deck. Like I can probably figure out a third of his deck just right off the top of my head because you know, there's a lot of a lot of brain power that goes into a card game in terms of like the higher levels of play, right? There's a lot of really cool stuff that, that can come from that. And I think it's a great way to get involved in a community. I think it's a great way to make friends. I know that one of my closest friends as a kid, we would travel to Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments. And I'm not gonna lie, me and him, we were both like super nerdy kids. Like we didn't have a lot of friends. And that was an opportunity for, for me to have a friend. Like, I, you know what I'm saying? And like we had something that we were like really into and I had friends online who did the same kind of stuff. We, we played Yu-Gi-Oh and stuff. So it was a really important part of my childhood and you know, allowing me to be a part of a community that maybe I otherwise wouldn't have been. Um, I remember going to like Toys R Us and doing like the little little tournaments on the weekends and things like that and traveling to regionals and and uh, you know, like I said, it was a huge part of my, my childhood. Uh, I kind of stepped away from it a little bit uh, like when I got to about 15 or 16 Kind of when I stepped away from it, I, I started doing music and stuff, high school, whatever. And then I got back into cards a little bit in the Pokemon, like as a Pokemon creator. And then over the pandemic, you guys probably know that like a lot of TCGs found a lot of success and I kind of got the bug to open up, uh, you know, vintage Pokemon cards. And then I got like really into vintage Pokemon cards because it was such a huge part of my childhood as well. And uh, and here I am, <laughs> I guess. I mean, I don't know. Here I am now, I don't know. So, yeah, Phantom. So the plan is we're gonna roll out on Test Flight for iOS and the uh, Google Play Store as, as beta for people in the first week of August is our plan right now. So, we got Warmite, Titanostock, Blazerus, Waspire, and Exaltair. When would tournaments start popping up? So we are working on potentially doing some stuff like online initially. So like a digital app tournament or a webcam tournament, things like that. In terms of like IRL tournaments, it's hard to say. Uh, there's a lot of things that have to happen for those to exist, but I would say most certainly early next year, maybe as soon as late this year for like our first in-person tournament. Um, we will do some online events. Like my plan is actually to roll out a calendar of online events for you guys. Uh, alternating between camera, like webcam tournaments and uh, digital app tournaments. So we, we, it is in the conversations. I want to do it. I want to commentate. I want to have fun doing it. So those are all things that are in the works. So, yeah. Smaltuga. We're getting there, no brainer. Tadpuff, Ampuff, Galaxy. I'll probably send you a message uh, in the next few days, brainer. Boom Bat, Lycavolt, and the Tectorus. Zapter, Tuga, Taqua, Ignector, Warmite, Cracket, Signectric, Astrabit, Aeromare, Glidesdale. I was told I need to rip the Glidesdale to get the Stellar, but I can't do that, man. I can't rip my own cards, dude. I, I have ripped my own cards before, but only for testing purposes. Is this testing though? Is this testing purposes? No, I can't start ripping my own cards, man. I can't do it. <laughs> sacrifice the glide. Someone else sacrificed it for me. Testing purposes, yeah, to, to verify the core, um, you know, the quality of the, the card stock, things like that. Ignector, Veritaqua, Tadpup, Ampup, and Elichick, Javalantis. I wonder if Javelantis is gonna see any play. It has some fun synergy with Tsunami, but it's just, it just doesn't do enough. Zephrog, Galaxy, and Ambrosia! Always a good card to have Hollow. Nobody is gonna be mad about Hollow Ambrosias. Staple card in Elestrals, by the way. 
I am the kind of guy who blings out my deck. So if you guys, I, I fully plan to play against you guys. I think what what I what I envision now is like, if I were to be at a tournament, like if we had a tournament or whatever, obviously I would, I would like host or whatever, and you know probably maybe hop on some commentary, um, and you know play against you guys too, like side side events kind of stuff. Um, but I'm gonna have a blinged out deck. Make no mistake about it. I'm gonna have cards you never even seen before. Okay, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm I'm going full Pegasus right now. I already told y'all. I'm gonna have stuff no one's ever seen, and you're not even gonna know what it does. It's gonna say A Drive can make up whatever this card does in the moment. That's what it's gonna say. So prepare yourselves. Don't think I won't do it either. What's up, Pepe? Thanks, man. I probably wouldn't, but it is fun to talk about. <laughs> All right, what do we got here? We got Leviathan, Clovey, Necrof, Earth Scout, Earth Smog, Earth Seer. Lobby, Foamy, Ivory, big hit Stellar right now, Ambrosia! Favorite food of the gods. We'll take it, dude. We'll take it. Not bad, not bad. Where's the Nog? I know, dude, I really need a Nog. This is our last pack, guys, this is it. This is it. Yeah, we're working on a mobile app. It will be iOS and Android. It will be all countries. Um, it's gonna roll out in beta first, and it's gonna be for backers first, and that'll be in August, early August, and then it'll roll out to everybody else shortly thereafter. All right, last pack, guys. Ignector. I did two boxes. I wasn't even planning on doing two. I was gonna do just one, so. Hammer of Hephaestus, Eruption, and Stellar Cracking! All right, not Stellar, but, you know, Cracking's cool. Cracking's cool. So, that was amazing though. Like, real talks? Those were big dubs, dude. Like, we take of those. We take of those a big dubs. So to recap, guys, we got Cracking, two Ambrosias, again, never a problem. Sonic Whore, two Sonic Whores. One's in my binder, I needed it. That's one of the best cards to pull, dude. Like, this is legitimately, in my opinion, like A or S tier, it's a very good card. Uh, Viscerous, another card. I, I prefer this one to the full art one, uh, personally. I, I, you know, Diego did a great job, but I like this art. This is like the OG Viscerous art in my mind, because I've ha I've seen it for so long. So this is the the, the one that I really like. Um, so getting another one of these is great. Spinosect, you know, I've, I've had my fair share of Spinosects. Thank you, Helen. Uh, Rise from the Ashes, again, we pulled a few of those earlier, but great card. We pulled two Volt Tempest, which I needed, so huge wins. I pulled the Alt Art Leviathan, which is in my binder, which I didn't have yet. And a full art Aeolus. Amazing. How many full arts left with the binder? So many, dude. So. I'm missing so many. Okay, so this is. So I have all of the, the main set done now. Minus full art. So this is. Um, this is full art Demeter. And then in full art Hephaestus, full art Poseidon, full art Zeus. I have the full art Aeolus now. So I guess that's what? Four? And then Nog is five, and then six, seven, eight. So again, Trifernal, Empherix, uh, slip in my mind right now, but, oh, it's Scent Harbor. So what did I say? Six, seven, eight, nine, uh, 10, Teratlas 11, so 11. Um, the only thing is I need eight more boxes technically to be able to finish. And I've got 36 boxes coming, so... Oh, I'll get the master set. I'll get it eventually. I have I have enough boxes coming that I'll get it. Well, listen, guys. Uh, what a treat this was. I'm so thankful for you guys to be here tonight. And it brings me such happiness and joy that you guys are watching the Illustrals openings. And I don't know what else to say. It's going to get crazy, guys. Like, these next few weeks are about to be wild. If you're not uh, keeping up on the project, man, like... It's about to be crazy, guys. Like... That's all I can say. We're about to uh, we're about to do something very, very special. And you guys are here at the beginning, so even more awesome, right? Thank you guys so much. I love you guys. Until next time. Peace out, guys.